Welcome to the State Museum of the History of Religion in St. Petersburg, Russia. This museum was originally founded in 1932 under communism, when religion was meant to be a thing of the past. But now that Soviet communism is a thing of the past, the museum celebrates different religious traditions, housing artifacts from many times and cultures, including that of the Jews. The Mishnah, the great compendium of Jewish law and knowledge, tells us, the world stands on three things, the Torah, service of God, and acts of kindness. These three principles form the foundation of Jewish life over the centuries, helping to create a system of ritual and charity that enabled the survival of Jewish communities through good times and through years of great hardship. The collection at this museum can teach us about the Jewish religion, but some of the items go farther, telling the story of specific people who are long vanished and forgotten, but who left us an unexpected trace in the form of an artifact. If we can decode what the object is trying to tell us, we'll learn something about these people and their lives long ago. This type of grand curtain is known in Hebrew as a parochet, and in many synagogues you'll find one covering the doors of the ark that holds Torah scrolls. This one comes from a synagogue on Bolshaya Bronaya Street in the center of Moscow. We see the tablets of the law with the Ten Commandments embroidered in the middle, with each of the commandments designated by the first word. Beside the tablets are heraldic lions and also columns that symbolize the temple in Jerusalem. Above the tablets we find a strange detail. It's the shape of a crown, but the crown itself is gone. More on that in a moment. On the parochet we also find a dedication. My benevolence established this temple. There's no name, but worshippers here would have known whose benevolence it was. Lazar Polyakov, a famous Moscow banker and philanthropist who led the city's Jews through the turbulence of the final decades of Tsarist Russia. Polyakov was born into a family of merchants in the provincial district of Orsha, now in Belarus, in 1843. In his early 20s, with the help of his brother Samuel, he took up railway engineering and was then admitted to Russia's most elite club of merchants, known as the First Guild. Soon he opened his own bank in Moscow. Residence in Moscow was a rare privilege for a Jew at the time, when the law restricted almost all Jews to areas on the periphery of the Russian Empire. Polyakov led the Jewish community in Moscow for 35 years. He sponsored construction of the Jewish hospital on Voronsovskaya Street and the Jewish cemetery. He was one of the great benefactors of his time. The parochet includes a nod to these charitable endeavors in the form of a quote from the Book of Psalms. The full passage reads, He has distributed freely, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever, his horn shall be exalted with honor. Here the word exalted, tarom, is highlighted, and this is actually a kind of code giving us more historical detail. In Hebrew, every letter has a numeric value. When you calculate the value of these four letters, the result gives you the Jewish calendar year 5646, which began in the fall of 1885 and ended in the fall of 1886. This seems to be the year that Polyakov opened the synagogue where the curtain hung. The visual motifs on the parochet are familiar from houses of prayer across the Jewish world of Europe, but this one has a few unique elements. For one thing, it's much larger than you might expect. In fact, it's one of the biggest parochets in the museum collection. Even though the synagogue for which it was made was quite small, it would have been a dominant feature in a very modest space. The parochet also includes a strange piece of more worn out and faded velvet that stands out from the rest of the luxurious material. This seems to be a fragment of an older parochet that was once in use in a small prayer room at Polyakov's house elsewhere in the city. The fragment was incorporated here as a way of establishing continuity as the merchant built a more substantial synagogue. And as Moscow's Jews grew in stature and confidence, though they were still not allowed to construct a synagogue building and could only pray discreetly in private homes. When Polyakov was given permission to renovate his mansion on Bolshaya Bronaya Street, he had the new synagogue built inside. The mansion was designed by the architect Mikhail Tichago. 
The plan showed that the Jewish merchant wasn't keeping a low profile or playing down his identity. The architect gave the house a Moorish facade and a dome with a six-pointed Star of David. In a sign of the times, however, there was also an underground passage to be used in case of a pogrom. The new Polyakov synagogue was supposed to accommodate only 40 families, but it immediately became the center of communal life and stayed that way for about five years, until 1891, when things changed in Moscow. The city's relatively tolerant governor general, Vladimir Dolgoruko, was replaced by the arch-conservative Grand Duke, Sergei Alexandrovich, whose animosity to Jews was well known. After that, only Polyakov's family members were allowed to pray in the synagogue. He filed petitions asking authorities to allow public prayer services, and sometimes they were granted. Then as many as a hundred Jewish families would come. But on more than one occasion, these prayer services were interrupted and dispersed by the police. Polyakov's prayer house was the most important synagogue in Moscow until 1906, when the great choral synagogue opened on Spasoglinyshevsky Lane, supported, of course, by a donation from Polyakov. When the Russian government granted the Jewish merchant hereditary nobility, his coat of arms was adorned with heraldic lions, perhaps a nod to the same lions that guarded the tablets of the law on his parochet. The lion is the symbol of Judah, one of the 12 tribes of Israel, and the tribe from which most of today's Jews are believed to descend. Other artifacts at the museum tell us more about Polyakov and his family, like a Torah scroll that the merchant had written in memory of his son Isaac, who died young. On the handles of the scroll, we find an inscription reading, this is the Torah scroll in memory of the soul of the young man, Isaac. The handles and other ornaments on this particular scroll appear to have been painted black in a sign of mourning. Polyakov himself died in 1914. Three years later, came the Bolshevik Revolution. Despite the anti-religious fervor of the new Soviet regime, the synagogue stayed open for 20 more years until 1937, when Stalin's secret police arrested the cantor, Moshe Chaim Gertenberg, and shot him. The synagogue was shuttered, leaving a hole at the center of Moscow's Jewish life and history. This absence is reflected on the parochet, in that ghostly shape of a crown Many such curtains feature a crown of the Torah, or Keter Torah, signifying the authority of the king of kings. This one had a crown embroidered in silver and gold. You can still see it in photographs up until the 1920s. That's when congregants at the Polyakov Synagogue decided it might be a good idea to make it disappear. Because for the revolutionaries who were now running Russia with a brutal hand, the crown of the Torah looked a lot like the crown of the Tsar. But the past has a way of lingering, and the shape of the crown of the Torah never went away. 